Welcome back to Simple Entomology for the Fly Tire and Fly Fisherman, Part 12. I'm Raj Kletke, and today we'll continue on with mayflies. In Mayflies Part 1, we learned how to identify mayflies, talked about mayfly stages of importance to the fly fisherman, and even tied some early stage mayfly patterns. Let's continue on with additional mayfly patterns that you will need to successfully fish for trout. The sparkle dun is one of my favorite fly patterns to fish during a mayfly emergence. Technically, the sparkle dun is a late stage emerger rather than a true dun, as it still carries its shuck, which is felt to represent an incompletely shed nymph skin. There are many excellent videos online of how to tie sparkle dun, so I will not show how to tie one here. For the tiny mayflies, I often tie a simple hackle wrap, which can be thought of as a sparkle dun variant. I show how to tie this fly in midges part 2, simple entomology for the fly tire and fly fisherman part 6. For different water conditions, and sometimes for reasons known only to the trout, it's worthwhile having multiple patterns for the various stages. The quad is another one of my favorite patterns. The way I tie a quad can be seen on my Rotary Vice Techniques Part 6, but I'm sure there are other videos on how to tie a quad fly also. My most common spinner pattern is a polywing spinner. It has a large thorax, although that isn't that apparent with this black thorax and black background in this particular picture. You'll note that I tie it in reverse style, which is known as ALS style, and how to tie it can again be found online. Here's that relatively complex list of mayfly stages that we must consider when fishing a mayfly hatch. Now let's start simplifying it by looking at the flies that we have tied or already discussed. The nymph and floating nymphs are very similar patterns, and the floating nymph is, of course, the early stage emerger. For a mid-stage emerger, a soft hackle works quite well and can also double for cripples and stillborns. The sparkle dun and quad are late-stage emergers, but function well for the dun stage also. The spinner is a separate fly, but easy to tie. So basically, with these five or six patterns in appropriate sizes and possibly a few variations in colors, you can cover most mayfly hatches. So are these the only mayfly patterns that I use to fish mayflies? Of course not. I fill my box with many other patterns, the most common of which are listed here. However, the ones that we have covered should be a good start to fishing mayflies, and these others can be added later as needed. Before we discuss further how to fish the mayfly imitations that we've tied, please remember that my definition of a hatch includes not only an emergence, but any time a specific organism or stage is present in adequate numbers to elicit selective feeding. The mayfly nymph may be used in the searching manner for opportunistically feeding trout, although often there are better choices, which we'll discuss later. As the nymphs become active, Shortly before the surface emergence, bouncing a nymph along the bottom of the stream can be very useful. With some of the species that emerge out of the water, the nymphs may migrate toward shore or other slow water. In this case, swinging a nymph toward shore may be the best way to fish. The best way to know when to start fishing the nymphs is to know when the hatch was the day before. I like picking up rocks, and if I find nymphs with dark wing cases, likely they will be hatching later that day. But let me warn you that the nymphs that you find under rocks are not necessarily the same nymphs that are in the drift and may not be a good choice as a searching nymph. For example, this fast water nymph is also known as a clinger nymph because it clings tightly to the rock and is not commonly knocked into the drift. However, it does become active shortly before its surface emergence and therefore is very worthwhile fishing prior to the emergence, but usually not as a searching nymph. 
the best location or water type to fish your nymph in is in the water type that that particular mayfly species prefers or slightly downstream from the water type that mayfly species prefers. Now the real fun begins as the emergence is actually starting to take place as you're seeing rising fish. I usually put on a quad or a sparkle dun as a late stage emerger. I will put a soft hackle as a dropper off this as the soft hackle can represent a mid-stage emerger as well as cripples and stillborns. Only if that doesn't work do I put the floating nymph on as a dropper. Note again that I use a late stage emerger, not a specific done pattern. Okay, there's lots of rising fish now, so I'm pretty sure the trout are feeding selectively. However, I'm not having luck. What do I do? First, I check for size by trying to capture some actual mayflies that are hatching. Commonly, the fly that I chose will be too large and going to a smaller fly will resolve this issue. I then try to watch the duns as they float along the surface. Are they disappearing when the trout rise? Are the trout leaving a bubble, meaning they're taking something off the surface? Or are we only getting subsurface feeding? If I'm still not doing any good, I may try some of those patterns that we just mentioned briefly that I carry in my box or make other changes that we'll talk about shortly. When you're starting to see fairly numerous but leisurely rises and not an obvious organism in the air, it's time to think of possible spinner falls or midges. Look closely at the surface water and if spinners are present, they're usually quite obvious. Use an appropriate size and color spinner pattern. If the spinner is small, it can be very hard to see, so using it as a dropper off an indicator fly may be useful. So while mayflies are common on trout streams, imitating a mayfly may not always be your best choice. When trout are dormant, an actively fished streamer is likely your best possibility of catching fish. However, I may put a mayfly soft hackle or nymph as a dropper off the streamer. Sometimes the streamer wakes the fish and then they'll take the nymph or soft hackle. Especially if there are lots of mayflies on the stream you're fishing, I may use a late stage emerger, in other words a sparkle done or a quad, as a searching mayfly if I want to fish dry, and a mayfly nymph if I want to fish wet. However, when fish are feeding opportunistically, something that looks alive is more important than a specific organism. Therefore, my primary fly may not be a mayfly representative at all, but I may use a mayfly as a dropper. So mayflies may be useful when fish are feeding opportunistically, but often there are better choices. Do not hesitate to change your imitation if you're not having any luck with your first choice. Selective feeding to mayflies is actually quite common on most streams and is clearly not an unusual event as long as you remember that many hatches are relatively sparse and you may not see a lot of organisms, but you may recognize fish flashing near the bottom of the stream when they're taking nymphs or intermittent surface activity. The appropriate mayfly imitation is usually the key to success. The easiest time to catch trout on a reasonable mayfly imitation is during a relatively sparse, sometimes not all that obvious, mayfly hatch. During these sparse hatches, trout are often not as selective to stage or even size of the fly, although generally it is best to go too small rather than too large. Fishing a super hatch of a mayfly emergence where there are many naturals floating over the trout can be extremely frustrating. This is where it becomes very critical to check the size of your fly and make sure that you are fishing the correct hatch. Be aware that sometimes there are multiple organisms hatching at the same time, that the fish may be taking only a certain stage of the fly, 
and occasionally there may even be midges or spinners mixed in, and the fish are feeding selectively on these organisms. While all these mayfly stages may sound quite complex, one thing that greatly simplifies our fishing a mayfly emergence is that not all stages are important for all mayflies. So if you know which mayfly is hatching, you can usually tell what is the most important stage and how is it best fished. For example, all of the stages may be important for most of the mayfly species that emerge midstream from the surface. This includes the common blue-winged olives and most of the ephemerella. However, for small mayflies, such as trichos, the spinner seems to be the most important stage. However, a few trichoduns can also catch fish. There are a few mayflies that crawl out of the water to emerge, and hence only the nymph is of any importance. Obviously, spinners are important for any of the mayfly species that have surface egg layers. There are rare mayflies which emerge at the bottom of the stream rather than on the surface, and a swung soft hackle is probably the fly of choice in that case. There is at least one mayfly species that I know of, the betus, which is one of the blue-winged olives, that dives into the stream to lay its egg, so a special betus diving pattern, something we did not discuss, may be needed. While experience and reading will help you gain this knowledge, the quickest way is to simply ask at the fly shop. They're more than happy to sell you the appropriate stage for the current hatching mayfly species. Well, thanks for watching. I'm Raj Kletke, and this is the end of my entomology series. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed putting it on. There are many simplifications in my series, but I hope this has stimulated you to study entomology further. This will make your fly tying, fly fishing, and time on the stream more enjoyable. Who knows, it may even help you catch more fish. So long for now, and good fishing.